where you hear all the intimate details of a first date. And now, here's the host of Love Connection, Chuck Woolery. Thank you, Johnny. Oh, thanks, everybody. Thank you. started by meeting our first guest. He says that women love his shoulders, and he thinks that he's in for a quick marriage. I don't know what that means. We'll find out. He admits that a woman who pouts can easily get the best of him, and there's a certain look that he likes a woman to have. Please welcome Kurt Levy. Hi, Kurt. How are you? Nice to see you. Kind of you. Have a seat right there and uh, tell me about this look that you like for women to have. Well, you know, um, I like women who sort of have that sweet, almost innocent look. Um, to me, that's real femininity as compared to, uh, you know, women who look overly sophisticated and hardened and tough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is this about a, you're in for a quick marriage? What does that mean? Oh, um, I guess I was just kind of kidding about that. Um, you know, I've been dating so many years and I uh, haven't found Mrs. Wright. I figure when I do find her, I'll Bingo. jump at the You'll, chance yeah, to marry her. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And pouts. You like women to pout. Oh, I hate it. Oh, you hate it? Oh, I hate it. Oh. Um, when women just sit there, they're angry and so they don't say anything, I hate that. I'd rather they hit me, yell at me, kill me. Anything's better really? than just sitting there and refusing to talk. Mm. But you know, it's effective. They get me to do uh, pretty much whatever they want by yeah. pouting. Well, okay. I'm going to show you the women that Kurt had to choose from. Remember, you're going to pick the woman that you think's best for him. First, there's Cynthia. She thinks she's a little crazy, but not completely insane. And on her date, she enjoys anything from poetry readings to snorkeling. The first thing that she notices about a man is if his lips are full and biteable. And here's more from Cynthia. There's some men that, if they kiss you or even when they're making love, it's like they don't notice there's someone else in the room. <laughs> That can be really, that can be really annoying, you know? Hey, remember me? Yeah. <laughs> then Robin, uh, she ended her last relationship because she felt more like his shrink than his girlfriend. She thinks men get a little annoyed because she sometimes beats them at sports. And uh, here's what she noticed about men at airports. During business hours, there are a lot of good-looking men that, that are on the plane and in the airport and, and, um, Unfortunately, a lot of the time I just rushed out of the house and, and I don't take the time to really look great. And then, then I think, oh man, I should come back here and hang out sometime. <laughs> but I don't really have a flight. Finally, Renee, she'd like to meet a man who doesn't have any ex-wives or kids and isn't hairy. She says that some men can't handle the, the fact that she's a dentist and makes more money than them. And uh, here's Renee on the subject of good oral hygiene, or good oral hygiene, I guess it is. <laughs> definite must, definite must, because uh, bacteria is definitely spread through a little tongue hockey action there, and I don't want to catch any, so and good oral hygiene is uh, a definite must. <laughs> Does that seem like the appropriate attitude for your local dentist? I don't know. Anyway, those are the three women Kurt had to choose from. It's time for you to vote. Who would you send him out there? <laughs> Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll meet the woman Kurt selected. Hear everything that happened on their date. We'll do it. Two and two. Be right back at you. Tell oh, us who he picked. Um, I picked Robin. And they haven't seen each other since the date. We always have no side. Say little Robin home. Hi, Robin. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, thank you. Just make yourself at home back there, and uh, Kurt will start us off. Um, let's see. We started out by me giving her a phone call, and I guess I realized pretty quickly we weren't going to have anything in common. Really? I like, well, I mean, I like women who are deep, and she just didn't seem like a deep kind of person. She seemed more like the kind of, you know, woman who probably knows all the, uh, colors of lipstick, but couldn't tell you who the vice president of the United States was. Really? <laughs> well, what's your side of this phone conversation, Robin? Well, I thought he had a monotone voice, he was whiny, and he sounded very boring, and that's how he turned out to be. <laughs> so what happened? Okay, um, she's kind of half living in San Francisco, half living in San Diego right now, and I'm in San well, Diego, so... Um, <laughs> you'll have to ask her about that, but uh, she suggested I come up to uh, San Francisco for the weekend. You know, at least the, the trip will be interesting. So you arrive at the airport, and is she there to meet you? She's there to pick me up. And what was your first impression of her? I guess I was a little disappointed. In her video, um, you know, she looked cute, but she, was, she looked a little bit older in person than her real age. She did, 
she did have a good body, though. I will give her credit for that. Although I really do have to say, you know, it's a shame she doesn't work out a little less in her body and a little more in her mind. Mm. You don't deserve to know my mind. You, uh, uh, I just... <laughs> well, Robin, uh, what did you think? When I saw him? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought he was so fine, and he was just gorgeous, the man of my dreams. Not! So here you are in the airport, and uh, you're deciding to do what? Um, well, she had already kind of planned out the whole date. She had. Um, yeah. Oh, that was nice for you. And um, step number so one. Were you was... appreciative of that, or were you still kind of thinking, "Oh, I wish I was out with this"? Tell him who paid for your hotel, too. What did you say? I said, "Tell him who paid for your hotel." Robin paid for the hotel. I will give her credit for that. What do you mean, give her credit? She paid for your hotel. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me, just a minute. <laughs> Why? Oh, I just thought I I wanted him to stay next to. We went to a nightclub called Harry Denton's. Oh. which is one of the classiest nightclubs in San Francisco, and there's a hotel attached to it. I thought it would be a really nice experience, and, um... Gee, Manita, so. I mean, I can't believe that you you weren't more than just giving her credit, that you weren't really impressed and appreciative of that. No, I was appreciative, but I thought that was very nice. You never um, said that thank you. That what? I said he thank you me. No. several no, times, No, and when he, called me, when he called me from the hotel, he billed it to the room on my credit card. I did. I called from the phone in the room. I did not right. ask to bill it to the but credit you card. you used your credit card. From the room? Why didn't you? Yeah, your calling card. Don't you, you have one? He told me to call you from the room the next morning. Did I say to bill it to me? <laughs> I didn't think about that. I just used the phone that was in the room. I'd be glad to pay you back for the phone call since that seems very important to you. So, well, let me ask you a question. So, you 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 went, left and went straight to the air or straight to the hotel and then to the uh, to the club? No, we actually went out to dinner. She had picked the restaurant. She seemed fascinated by the fact that this restaurant had light fixtures that looked like breasts. That was um, why you wanted that, to go No, no, no. There. You, you suggested the restaurant. <laughs> you told me it had light fixtures that looked like breasts. You. And <laughs> you seemed to think that was a good idea. But the bottom line is the light fixtures didn't look like breasts, so it really doesn't matter. And you were um, disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chow Chow. Uh, now, what it happened after It was a beautiful after restaurant. Dinner? Very good food. Did you enjoy the food in the restaurant? Oh, the, the food was good. You know, conversation went nowhere. We had nothing in common. But the food was good. Thank Again, God I, I don't her, have anything in common with you. I did. <laughs> So, so what happened after after dinner? For some reason, she decided to take me to a wedding reception. I don't know. Maybe she felt you like since we weren't going to go. Gonna get, you asked me if I, I wanted said, to go, and I was trying to be treasure polite Island. by saying yes. If oh. you wanted to see Treasure Island, we could stop by. It's There's beautiful. There's nothing on Treasure They're Island to see. It's a military base. You asked me to go to the wedding reception, and I tried to be polite by agreeing, but then you showed me off like an animal in a zoo, introducing me at each table. I didn't table show you as, off. Hi, this is Kurt, my love connection date. Hi, this is Kurt, my love connection date. Is this date. true, Robin? I mean, you know, it was, it was. <laughs> it's true, part of it's true. I was not showing him off. I was making sure everyone knew that I didn't choose this guy. <laughs> I, I, I gotta, I gotta tell you something, Kurt. As, uh -huh. as, uh, as uh, unsophisticated or unintelligent as you think this woman is, she seems to have a razor edge to her mind. To me. <laughs> How did this date end? She chose not to use it uh, on the date. Um, when we went to a bar, um, she was wearing a very low-cut dress. She did ask me if she should wear a sexy dress. And I said yes, but this was really low cut. I would say inappropriately it was so. Not low cut. All the other people in the bar were very classily dressed. As she says, it was a classy bar, and so all the male eyes I noticed were on one place, and it wasn't on, you know, her face. It was a very classy dress. It it was not low cut. It was just there was a lot hanging out there, Robin. <laughs> oh, how did this date end? Oh uh, well, you know, it was going nowhere, so. Um, you know, the hotel Boy, was no just... no kidding. I mean... <laughs> the hotel was right next to the bar, so, you know, I went up, went to bed, and, you know, she came and picked me up and took me to the airport the next day, and that's uh, really all there was to it. Well, there was a little bit more. What's that, Robin? Okay. Well, if I have to describe Kurt, the one word I could not use would be gentleman. Uh, he was a slob. He threw away a yogurt container in my car. He stuffed it in between the door and the seat, and it got yogurt all over my car. Kurt... Oh! Well, 
and when Robin, I, was I spent it up, he more didn't than two hundred dollars on that trip. That's a lot more than you spent, so I wouldn't complain. I about had me to being get cheap. myself down there too. I, I got to get out of this. <laughs> I just got to. Let's take a look and see the audience pick. This was a disaster. Oh. oh boy, they they thought you made the right choice. They liked Robin. Well, they were sure wrong, yeah. Chuck. Well, Robin, gee, I, you know, you've come all the way down here from San Francisco and spent more money. I certainly appreciate you coming oh, no. on the show. You oh, seem like a nice person to me. Thank you. I and, had a uh, great time. I loved sorry it. Sorry we didn't make a love connection for you. That's okay. I'd sure like to see you under different circumstances. Well, thanks. Oh, thank I'd you. like to be back. Okay. And, uh, Kurt, we thanks tried. Thanks for having me, Chuck. We tried. Hang time. on right there, okay. and we'll be right back with another couple. Stay with us. <laughs> the store-wide savings and values this Thursday and Friday. The... Finds the women in California scary. Please welcome Kurt Levy. Women in California are scary, and I've heard them described a lot of ways, but I've never heard that particular adjective used. Well, you know, I'm comparing to what I... I was just back at school in Rhode Island, and, you know, they're schoolgirls there. They're actually very pretty, but they're schoolgirls, more down-to-earth, more modest. The women here, they're just kind of beautiful in a showy sort of intimidating way. Um, you know, I go to, um, I don't know if you've heard of UTC Mall down in San Diego, that's, that's where I'm living. No, I, I go there, there's all these beautiful women parading by during lunch, and it's kind of like torture because they're so intimidating that all you can do is watch. You know, it's kind of like being on a diet and having chocolate bonbons, you know, waved in, <laughs> in front of your nose. Uh, so I just go back to work really frustrated. You know? What's this about your job hurting your social life? What do you do? It's just that it's so technical, it's hard to describe to women. Um, I do something called neural networks, which is trying to build intelligent computer systems based loosely on the way that neurons in your brain work. Oh, of course. And I, I know all about right. that. Right. <laughs> you know about that, right? I have no idea. So, <laughs> that, I wish people would just say that. Instead, yeah. they, these women go, oh, that's interesting, and then their eyes just glaze, glaze right over, over. Sure. and that's the end of that conversation. Yeah, line, you get to so, the uh, third vertebrae <laughs> on the computer and you're gone. Let's take a look at the women that Kurt had to choose from now. Watch closely because you're going to pick the woman that she thinks best for him. Here we go. First is Mary Ann. She's originally from Grand Rapids, Michigan. She's not dating a lot these days, and when, uh, when she does get asked out, she says that guys are all unemployed, pessimistic, and nerds. And here's Mary Ann on the subject of singles bars. I think of bars as a real meat market. I think that, you know, the girls spend so many hours primping themselves, and I'm not one that spends an hour in the bathroom getting ready and lots of makeup on my face. And the guys usually go in with these, you know, eyeballs falling out of their head and, you know, with meat hanging around their neck waiting for somebody to bite, you know. <laughs> An interesting way to put it. Yeah. Next, there was Karen. She spends her free time playing tennis and riding her bike and searching for Mr. Wright. She says that she's usually the one who asks a man out. And here's why she thinks that men are reluctant to do the asking. Because they're insecure. That's the number one thing. Men just are not, they're not positive with themselves, they're not secure, and they're just big babies. That's all it is. And they can't handle dating. It's a scary thing out there for them. So that's a typical man for you. Just a little bit of scary. <laughs> big babies, yeah. Well, finally, Angie, she says that the uh, first sign of a good date is nonstop talking. Second sign of a good date is fogged up car windows. <laughs> she claims that she gets a lot of compliments on her eyes. And here's another thing men notice. I get comments on it a lot. I get comments on my voice just because I... Is that your real voice? And I say, yeah, it's my real voice. That's, that's the way I talk, you know. You like it? You're going to learn to love it, or you're not going to like it at all and leave it. That's point blank. Okay. Those are the three women Kurt had to choose from. Time for you to vote. Who do you think would be the best lady for him? <laughs> We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll meet the woman that Kurt selected, hear everything that happened on their date. We'll do that in two and two. Be right back at you. <laughs> Tell us who you selected. I selected Marianne. All righty. Gavin Keyes, Gavin Spencer, Bay, the elders of both sides. Say hello to Marianne Bohan. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Marianne. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Are you nervous? 
Um, just a little. My so voice is going. I'm a little nervous, too, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Tell me about the date. Well, I gave her a call. Um, talked for maybe an hour and a half. Um, I'm new to San Diego, so I sounded her out on the ideas, you know, that I had for where we should go. She said they all sound great, which kind of set the pace for the evening. Yeah. She's just too agreeable for her own good. I mean, everything you ask her, she's like, oh, whatever you want, that's just fine. Which, she, I know she's trying to be nice, but it just makes it hard to get any sense of whether she's having a great time or a terrible time. So, um, I wish she had been a little bit more forceful sure. with that. Yes, but, tell um, me about the plans, Marianne. I told them that, um, you know, some of the things that I have been to or I'd done, and, you know, I suggested some of the things that he told me we could do. I gave him kind of, I'd like to do this, but you can go ahead and choose. So mm -hmm. I just thought maybe he'd take a pointer that these are things that I've done before. You can go ahead and choose, but maybe I should have been a little bit more forward. Yeah. Chuck, that's not true. <laughs> I mean, either I'm deaf or... or that's possible. <laughs> maybe I'm just deaf. <laughs> I just didn't get the hint. I mean, I honestly thought they were all good to her. For instance, she said when I mentioned the wild animal park down in San Diego, she said, well, that'd be good. I haven't been there for a while. Well, how about um, the animal park? Were you looking forward to that? Marianne? Chuck, I, I told him that I'd been to the wild animal park. I have a free pass. Not until and the date. He I didn't tell me that. Chuck, I told, you, or I told him, Kurt, I had a free pass, and I must have been at least a dozen times. And I, you know, I'd been, so it was kind of dull and boring. I've yeah. pretty much seen everything, but... Probably know, you know lions still, by their Chuck first the... name. She well, knows all the animals by their first name, believe me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, what happens next? Um, so we go to the park, and I was expecting, you know, I had never been to the Wild Animal Park from people's description. I thought it would be like, you know, an African safari, lions, tigers, rhinoceroses. Um, you know, I thought maybe it'd bring out the wild animal in my date. I mean, it was, it was so boring. Um, I mean, except for three um, cute gorillas, it was just 91 different species of deer. I mean, it's just, it's like a deer zoo. I mean, there's big deer, little deer, the gazelles. The Wild Animal Park is not that dull and boring, Chuck. It really isn't. It's, I think it's more what you make out of it. <laughs> well, what happened next? Um, so we were going to go to a picnic at La Jolla Cove. We went to the food store to buy stuff at, at the deli there. And again, I was like asking her, what do you want to eat? Chuck, I mean, Chuck, Chuck, let and she's And she's like, you decide, you pick the food. I didn't say anything, and let me tell you why. I was so embarrassed. I, I couldn't believe it. First of all, we went to Vaughn's, a huge deli section. It was nice, wow. And he had to try everything that was there. And the woman said, you know, after he tried six things, the woman said, are you going to buy anything? I mean, I just stood back and I thought, you know, I don't even believe I'm going through this. So then he said, well, let me just try one more thing. So he tried one more thing, and then he said, oh, I'm lying. Let me try this, too. So it's, uh, I tasted three things, but that's not the point. Uh, the six point was, things. I was counting I because I was so nervous. I can't believe me. he tried six things. Let's, let's get off the supermarket, okay? okay? That's not very interesting. Um... <laughs> On the way out of the supermarket, I saw some wood. Um, they were selling wood? wood for fires, and that reminded me that I really had wanted, ever since I've been in San Diego, I've seen people make fires, on, fires the beach, on the beach, yeah. and I wanted to do that. Yes, so I suggested laws, I that to Marianne. I think it's only against the law after 10 o'clock or something. Oh. But um, in any case, I suggested that, and she was like, okay, that's a good idea. We um, needed wood. It was cold out there, and I was thinking I was going to freeze to death, so I said, you know, we need that wood. Fire. That's fine. <laughs> So the first beach we went to, all the pits were taken, and we're kind of debating whether we should try another beach. You like or barbecue not. pits, stuff like that. Barbecue pits. There may be 10, 15 on the beach, and they were all. So taken. now, what did you do? You can't find a barbecue pit. What do you do, Marianne? We're walking around, and I told them, I said, these people probably have been here since the early morning, and they were all full. And he said, well, let's ask if somebody wants to give up their pit. And I just thought, oh my God, these people have been here all day. They're not going to just say, okay, sure. So he offered, said, would you give up your pit? And these people looked at him, and thank God it was dark, and I wish I had dark glasses at that time. Um, he went up to one couple that was obviously having a love connection, and he asked them, can I buy your pit off of you for $20? 20 bucks for your pit. Sounds like money haul. $20. <laughs> so, but they didn't give it up, or did they? No. No. Um, no. If I was with a friend, I wouldn't have done that, but I thought, you know, I'm, I'm trying to show her the best time that I can, and I don't want to have to drag her along. So it's not going beach. well. How's no, the date in? You know, it wasn't actually unpleasant. Um, you know, it wasn't unpleasant for me. I have no idea um, how it was for her. But anyway, after we were freezing on the beach for a few hours, 
I finally, I was kind of hoping that she'd say, let's go, because I didn't want to be rude and, and end the date. Um, so eventually I just said, I'm I freezing, thought you'd let's take go a home. hint with my hands in my ski jacket, just shivering like this, and I did say, God, I'm cold, God, it's freezing. And when our fire burned out finally, you know, I'm just... So you'd like, resort to cool. prayer at this point, I see. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's take a look, see the audience. <laughs> okay, okay, that's a good idea. Well, they thought Marianne was perfect. They picked her 54%. 2% for Karen. Wow. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, well. Want to talk about this? Uh, no, no, there's not much to talk about. Either one really. Marianne, I'm sorry things didn't work out. Maybe we'll see you again under better circumstances. Okay. You both seem like nice people. You know, it just happens. <laughs> didn't work out. It was Thank fun you, just being on Love Connection. Thanks, for being Thanks on a the lot show. for having just, uh, me. Stay right there. Okay. We'll be back with another guest in just a minute. Stay with us. <laughs>